Hey everybody, welcome to Mammoth Interactive's YouTube channel. First of all, I want to thank you for watching this video. And remember that this channel doesn't do Patreon, instead we sell our digital courses down below. And every single dollar that we get from the products you buy below goes into making more content. The best way to help out this channel and Mammoth Interactive is to subscribe to Mammoth Interactive's huge library of content. Get thousands of hours and hundreds of courses for a low, low price down below. We have a monthly option and a yearly option. Thanks for listening and I'll see you in the video. Hey everybody, welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use this dialogue plugin here. Now, the specific dialogue plugin that I want to show you how to use is this one here. I know it's paid, but it's very good. And I know there are also tutorials out there, but I want to show you how to use it. And this is such a good plugin that, you know, I think it's just really good. Um, again, I think it's worth the money here. You might want to get it on sale. Nevertheless, um, let's go ahead and let's um, go and uh, add in our dialogue plugin. So first things first is when you add in a project, you have to make sure that it's enabled. Now I've already done that off screen because usually you have to restart it. So once you get the, the plugin, you should enable it. Okay, very simple stuff. Let's add in another folder here and um, we'll call that dialogue, just like that here. Okay, so we'll add the dialogue here. And in here, it's actually fairly easy to use. I'm going to go and click Dialogue Plugin here. If you don't see Dialogue Plugin, the plugin was not enabled. So you need to go back and figure out how to enable it. And I'm just going to do Test Dialogue. Okay? We can just call it something simple here. And if you really want to, um, it's probably best that you have like you know a folder called Dialogue Scripts. And then maybe Dialogue. Um, there's a bunch of different things that you'll see um, and different uh, items that you'll see that you can use with the dialogue plugin and you might want your own folders to that because the complex game you'll have multiple files but nevertheless let's go ahead let's open that up here and as you can see we have the start here now if you right click you get a PC answer and an NPC answer so let's just do a simple hello okay we're gonna make something that's easy and test right so this will come up here and this is what the NPC or non-player character will say when uh, when you pull up the dialogue, all right? So let's go ahead, let's add in a PC answer. Now this is what you are going to be answering. Now, if you're wondering how this all works, well, there's basically backend code that you're not seeing here to make this all work. And that's why you buy those plugins to make it easier. So we're gonna say, hey, right? And then we'll add in another PC answer. We'll say, bye. All right, simple enough. We don't want to make this too complicated, okay? Next thing uh, is what we're going to do is we're going to add in a box trigger here. And we're just going to basically make this box trigger. Um, and I wonder if I can just, yeah, there we go. All right, we'll just make this box trigger something big like this. Make it a little bit wider, all right? And so nevertheless, uh, when we enter this box trigger, it's going to trigger a dialogue, okay? So let's go ahead and let's add in uh, the blueprint script here. And we're going to go ahead and push select. And there enough. There we go. We have a box trigger. Let's change it to dialog box trigger. Okay. And there you go. So you now have a dialog box trigger here. And well, we need to actually do something with it. Okay. But first things first, we need to go and set this up here. So I'm going to go into my third person character here. And I'm going to hop into the third person game mode here. And I'm going to make a function. And we're going to call this start dialogue okay and that's exactly what it's going to do now in order to make um, this work here we need to first of all cast to third person character and then we need to um, get player character and then as that character we need to create a widget so let's create widget and the owning player, of course, is going to, um, the owning player, of course, um, uh, uh, we'll just uh, leave the owning player as it is, but we're going to set this up as something a little bit different in a moment here, okay? And the dialog, uh, we are going to add as demo dialog widget, okay? And then here we have the test dialog. Now, you don't really want to do this because each trigger box is going to have its own dialogue, so you might want to do um, uh, you want to do this dialogue here um, as something that you plug into it. 
So how do we do that? Well, let's go to our start dialog here and let's add in an input. Okay, and we're just going to call this dialog. And the type here, we're just going to type in dialog. Dialog, right? And we're just going to add that in here. Make sure you compile and then you just drag that over here. So what this is going to do is that every time you call start dialog, you're going to feed in the specific dialog here, okay? And that way, it's going to be a lot more uh, it's going to be it's going to be a lot better here. OK, so what we're also going to do is we're going to add to viewport. OK, and then, of course, we need to drag that in here. OK, so if we now call the game mode for wherever that game mode is, we will now be able to see that dialogue here. OK, so let's go back to the trigger box here and then let's go and well, we'll let's delete all this here and go to our collision component and we will add in a begin override okay now in this begin override here um, what we need to do is we need to cast to the third person character and what this means is that we are only going to make sure that when the character enters the dialogues trigger. Otherwise, if you have different objects that collide with it, it will just trigger automatically. Okay, we don't want to do that. Next up, we're going to cast to the third person game mode. And by the way, it has to be this exact game mode here. If you just like, I believe if you just type in game mode, or if you type in cast to game mode, right, you can get game mode here, but we want the third person game mode, not the same thing. Okay, the object is get game mode. Okay, that should be good enough there. And then guess what we're going to do? We're going to start dialogue. Okay, we're going to simply just start that dialogue here. But we need an asset here. We need a dialogue asset. So in order to do that, let's add in a variable. We'll just call this dialogue. And we're going to put it of type dialogue. No, not that one dialogue getting ahead of myself here okay go ahead and compile it and there you go you can see that you can now add in a dialogue here now if you really want to you can add in the test dialogue here but um, the last thing we need to do is make this um, scene so if we hop back in here and we see this we can now add in a dialogue here now let's just run this it might not work but nevertheless there we go look at that not bad but but there's a huge problem here this uh, doesn't quite work uh, just because, um, well, you can see it didn't quite work there, okay? So we need to go and fix that here. And the reason is, is that we need to drag this dialog box here and plug it into the start dialog, okay? So let's run through this here, okay? So we have a trigger box, okay? And in that, we are giving the test dialog here, okay? That test dialog is being fed into the start dialog, through the third person game mode here. So it kind of does a little bit of a feed in there. And I believe, look at that, hey and bye, right? But wait a minute, wait a minute, a couple things here. Well, there's obviously lots of problems here. First, my, uh, <laughs> the camera, and it was kept on going. Like I couldn't actually do anything. Well, this is actually really easily solved. All right. So once we add to viewport here, there's a few things that we have to do. Okay. And this is in our game mode here. And we're going to start the dialogue. And in that, we're going to, again, cast to third person character here. And I believe, did we already do that here? Yeah. So maybe we don't need to do that again. But what we need to do is from this here we need to disable input okay so we don't need to cast to it again you can if you want um, but uh, basically we need to cast and disable the input here and from this here we're gonna um, and this is this this is a little bit weird um, let's get player controller and when I was prototyping this, this was a little bit um, hard to do, but I'm going to show you, um, and we're, we're going to say set mouse cursor, cursor, and we're going to say get show, uh, not get show cursor, but it is, let's say, uh, show cursor. We're going to set show mouse cursor, and we're basically, um, 
going to show the mouse cursor here. Because if you look, by the way, you can see that the mouse cursor is hidden, and then boom, okay? Not only have it disabled input, well, look at that. Well, <laughs> it, uh, it works, but we have to do a little bit more here, okay? So as you can see, let's just kind of hop over to that here. So I disabled the input because I couldn't find a way to access that dialog. The second thing is I mentioned that this was a little bit not obvious here. If I do show mouse cursor right here, you, you see that it isn't uh, it isn't available. Okay. And I believe if you click this concept sensitive here, you can you can now see that it's there, right? So I usually like to do context sensitive because it makes your programming a little bit more robust because if you can't see it, then there's a big problem here. So if you don't see that context sensitive uh, or if that context sensitive is unchecked, then you'll be able to see it. Otherwise, you'll have to get the player controller. OK, so you get the player controller here. And I believe it doesn't happen here if I do set uh, mouse cursor. Yeah. And as you can see, uh, you know, if I do this show mouse cursor here and I do the target here, it doesn't work, right? So that context sensitive is something that's important here. So as you can see, all of this here uh, is looking really good. And this looks like a good time to stop the video because um, I'll show you how to add uh, more robust features in the next video. Thanks for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe and share this video on Reddit. See you later.